Testament, Numbers chapter 21. And in verse 4, you know the story. The, the Israelites had been exiled out of Egypt. Moses led them out of Egypt, and they were going through the wilderness. You know, and they get to a point, they start griping and complaining about the situation. And, uh, you know, God would provide for them and, you know, and meet their need. And they, you know, kind of move on, go on down the road. And they get to another point, same thing, gripe, complain, moan, you know, can't pay my electric bill, stuff like that. And, and God would just, you know, provide for them, and, and they go on down the road. Well, they kept doing this time after time again. And they got to a point in time to where they started not only blaspheming against God and talking about you know, about God and everything, but they all started, started blaspheming and talk ill of Moses. And that's where God went, time out. You see, what we got to understand so many times is that, yeah, God's a God of love. God is a God of grace and mercy, but he's also a God of wrath. And God cuts to a point in time to where he's had enough. And so he had got to the point where he had had enough of them. So what he did, he sent these, he sent these snakes into the camp of Israel. And they had been, began to bite the Israelites. And they were dropping like flies. They were dying. And the Bible describes it. The skin felt like fire. They were burning. They were dying. So they did what they had always done before. They go to Moses say, Moses, we're dying. Go to God. Tell him we're sorry. We'll repent. Turn from our sins and ask him to forgive us. And so Moses did as he had always done, and he does that. He goes to God and asks, and God says to Moses, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. He goes, if you'll take some bronze and form it into a snake, and if you'll stick it on the end of a pole and hold it up, he says, all who look upon that bronze serpent, I will save them from this torment and from this judgment of them disobeying me. And, and so you have to think, there's 2 million Jews. That's, that's estimated 2 million Jews that came out of Egypt. So the landscape was rolling most likely. There were trees and stuff. So you just think of the area that it would take to fit 2 million Jews in. That's a pretty big area. So if you're like the millionth guy back, how in the world are you going to see an average height man holding the snake on a stick up through the, all the obstacles? How could you see that? You couldn't. You didn't have, there's no hope. They, they couldn't see it. So how'd they get saved? It was a look of faith. See, somewhere out there, somewhere, they knew that Moses was going to hold that snake, that serpent up on a stick. And all who looked that way as a look of faith and believing and trusting that Moses somewhere was holding up that snake, that they would be saved. Now ask yourself, how does one become born again? Can, it's by trusting and believing in Jesus Christ. Could, could you see Jesus Christ dying on a cross 2,000 years ago? No, it's impossible. It's a look of faith. It is by faith, and here's the thing, you don't even get that faith on your own. God grants you the faith to believe in him, to trust him unto salvation. i got to move on. We're, we're just about out of time here. And so, uh, you know, in setting up for next week, I just want to talk really quick about the second aspect of grace. And it's just living under grace as a believer. And the troubling thing about this aspect of grace, about living under grace as a believer, is a lot of people really do misunderstand this. And they take this to believe that grace is something that they, well, just whatever I can live with kind of thing. You know, I can, I can continue in my sin because it's not a big deal because I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've been forgiven of my sins, past, present, and future. So what's the big deal? I've already been forgiven. So why not? And, and so sometimes we can also, just like what Satan does, in a sense, we can also suppress the truth of God's grace by our actions. And some misunderstand grace and use it to justify their sin, thinking that, you know, I've already been forgiven. But there's only one problem with that. And actually, there's a, quite a few problems with that. We're going to look at one of them, Romans chapter 6, verse 1, 2. Paul says, <laughs> what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. I mean, that's a pretty emphatic, no, no way. He said, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? It's like a dog would turn into a, his vomit. <laughs> Why would you do that? It doesn't make a whole lot. Why would you return back to that which he has delivered you from? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Look what Romans chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 teaches. He goes, And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, long suffering, or patience, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Not makes you go back to it. That could also be translated not knowing that the grace of God should lead you to turn from your sinful 
lays. And what the scriptures are teaching in here is that this kind of grace, the kind of grace that the Apostle Paul is writing about in Ephesians chapter 2, this kind of grace should change everything about you. It, that kind of love should result in actions in us. And if grace doesn't result in action, then it's not true grace. You see, grace is not about works in the sense of doing or earning or deserving. It, it's not about that. You can't deserve or earn your salvation, but grace should motivate our works, what we want to do for God. You see, grace is, in a nutshell, I understand what God has done for me. So I cannot help to do things for Him. I cannot help to desire to live my life holy. doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. doesn't mean you're not going to mess up from time to time and do some stupid stuff. But that's not the desire of your heart. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life and changes you and you become born again, your life changes. You're a new person. That's what this whole thing is about. You know, grace is I understand what God has done for me. And here's the thing. When Journey Church becomes a church that's just known for, you know, cool lights and a cool building and worship and, and gifted speakers and all that stuff, and we, we begin to be known for that, then we're done. We're done. Because we're supposed to be known by our actions. That's what we're supposed to be known as, as a church, and may that never change here. See, God's grace is God reaching down to man and down, while you were yet a sinner, spiritually dead, not deserving of anything, God chose you, and he chose me. And it's just an amazing thing. Religion is God reaching up, you know, I mean, or a man reaching up to God and saying, hey, God, are you watching? Did you see what I did? Uh, you see me give that homeless buck, you know, guy 10 bucks? Did you see that? See, that's religion. That's self-righteousness. That's what Nicodemus was. Great guy. But he was self-righteous, thinking that who he was and what he did was going to earn him a spot. That's self-righteousness. That's religion. Grace is simply God reaching down to man not because of anything that you've done, but because of what he's done for us by the way of the cross. You see, good deserving people do not make it to heaven. Sinners make it to heaven. Sinners that are saved by the grace of God. I, I guess you could say that bad people make it to heaven. I, I told you it was kind of backwards in the beginning. Remember that? I told you it was backwards. You think, well, I don't know about that, Donald. Well, Remember when Jesus died on the cross? You remember what was hanging on both sides of him? There were two thieves, one on one side, one on the other. And somehow, some way, God allows that one thief on the cross who was dying on a cross for his crimes that he committed. He deserved to die on that cross. He wasn't a good guy. And he sees Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden, he recognizes him for who he really is. And he simply says, Lord, he calls him Lord. Will you remember me this day in heaven? And Jesus simply said, today, surely, you will be with me in heaven. Just because he confessed him as Lord. Now, was the thief a good guy or a bad guy? A bad guy. I think you get the point. It's not about you. It's not about how good you are. It's not about what you deserve or what you earn. It's not about, it's not about because you don't think you deserve hell. It's not about that. It's only by the grace of God that you can be born again. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody moving around. just want just complete and total just calmness and silence in here. And Maybe you walked in here today and maybe just very innocently you bought into this idea of earning or because you don't deserve hell that surely you're going to make it into heaven. Maybe somehow you bought into that idea. So many people have. And the Bible clearly says the only way that a man can be born again is to trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. And maybe you've never done that before. Maybe you've just kind of bought into that idea, but you've never had a time just like that thief on the cross where you recognized and saw Jesus for who he really is. So all I want to do is pray for you. I don't want to call you up here or embarrass you and make you feel weird or uncomfortable or anything like that. But all you have to do right now is just simply call out to him and say, Lord. See, the Bible says in, in Romans 10, verse 9, it says, if you'll confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. 
That's all you have to do. That is the simplicity of the gospel. If anyone right now has made that decision for Christ, I won't call you up here and embarrass you in any way. Like I said, I just simply want to pray for you. Would you Would you be willing to lift your hand up and receive Christ right now? See your hand, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone else? God's offering it to you. Anyone else? I see your hand. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. I see your hand, sir. Yes, sir. Here's the thing. If you meant that with all your heart, just like Jesus told that thief, from the moment you breathe your last breath, you will be in heaven, seeing the glory and the splendor of who Jesus Christ really is. I'm just going to ask you to do one other thing right at the very end of this service. If, if you made that decision, um, you can, on your connection card, there's a little place on there that says, you know, I, I prayed to receive Christ today. If you would just fill it out and check it and turn it in, I would love to get back with you with some information It'll help you with your walk of Christ. But maybe you're thinking that, you know what, I don't want to wait to then, Donald. I've got to talk to somebody today about this. I will be right down here at the center, and I will be happy. Pastor Eric will be happy to talk to you. My wife, Stephanie, Mary Jo, we'll be happy to talk to you about that. And I would encourage you to do that. Father God, we come to you, Lord, and I just thank you, humbly thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to share your amazing word about your amazing grace, God. And Lord, I pray, God, maybe someone here that just didn't have the courage to lift their hand up, but God, but they clearly, for the first time, have seen you for who you really are and what you offer to them, Lord. And God, I pray, Father, that you would give them the strength, Father, Lord, to continue in that decision. And Lord, we thank you for all the ones, God, maybe you, you revealed to them, Lord, but it's not, they've been living in a life of sin. And, and Lord, would you give them the strength to turn from that? And turn to you, God, and live a life that would glorify you and honor you, that would prove that you have been saved. Lord, I pray that they would do that, Lord. So, God, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's put your hands together and thank God for sharing the word with us today. Love you. I just want to leave us all with a couple of next steps, you know, especially if you raise your hand, pay attention to this. You know, we... um, we have 46 different opportunities on a given week to grow in our faith in our gospel communities. We have small groups that meet all throughout the week, and God calls us to be in community as a means of growing in our faith with Christ. As we connect with other believers, as we study his word, iron sharpens iron. I want to challenge all of you to plug into one of those small groups during the course of this summer. And in August, uh, the second week in August, we're going to be having our uh, a big baptism that we do down in Green Cove Springs. So if you've yet to be baptized, I want you to be praying about if this is God's timing for you to be baptized, to go under the waters of baptism and symbolically come out publicly in this declaration of this new life as a believer in Jesus Christ, being born again, to let the world know that you're going public with your faith. We're going to be doing that the, first, the second weekend in August, we're going to be having that picnic. So be praying about that and thinking about it. We're going to be having the sign-ups coming out soon. So as we conclude today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he give you peace in Jesus' name. Live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others. Have a great weekend, everybody. God bless you guys. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us here for one of our inspiring messages at Journey Church. If you live in the greater Jacksonville area, we want to invite you to come out to one of our weekend experiences. Our service times are Saturday night at 6 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 a.m., or 11.15 a.m. Or if you would like to, you can join us online at any time watching any of our services live at journeychurch.org. We look forward to seeing you next time.